Have I got scriptures yet? The times and seasons in the earth. You call for light out of darkness. You that made a man to be the God you are. But you are. friends that when I first came to you to let you know the God's master stroke I didn't try to impress you with polished speeches and the latest philosophy next verse I deliberately kept it plain and simple for Jesus first Jesus and who he is then Jesus and what he did that's Jesus crucified next verse I was unsure of how to go about this and felt totally inadequate. I was scared to death if you want the truth. Coincidentally, yesterday I had to have a meeting somewhere and we're in the garden. And I felt bad. I'm like, ah, ah. the crowd I saw as the evening grew, I knew I would not see at hangout today. People just feeling fine when they will not feel fine in life. Go to any joint or go to relationship pages that teach nonsense. I was unsure if you will receive the truth. People questioned our methods at the beginning though. Is this how they do relationship and marriage teaching? I'm so glad you're experiencing the things happening here tonight. Julia and I can share with you stories and testimonies upon testimonies of when the devil approaches a marriage. First of all, people want to believe God to have children. Then they have children. Then Satan comes and wants to tamper with children. There are certain things that romantic behavior does not solve. Power response answers. He said, I was unsure if you want the truth. You know, one day we advertised Hangout, one of those years, and somebody said, commented on Facebook, I was in the last one. I will not attend this one. I did not enjoy it. I knew what she meant. She came with demons and left with them. You know why? Because I don't blame them. Some people sympathized with me when I began to emphasize relationship and marriage. Some of my friends told me, you that have an apostolic calling, you want to talk, I love you, you love me. I say, you don't know my calling. I say, you don't know my calling. The family altar. <laughs> if I want to help you understand, I will give you our counseling line for one week. If you don't run mad, you will run to God. The things you will hear. Paul says, I was unsure. If you want the truth or you just want to be played with. People are going through stuff they can't talk about. They dress up and they think they are fine. They are dying. Women are making up not because they want to look fine but because they are beaten. Some men can't go home not because they started out bad. Monster is at home. The one that the Bible talks about. That it's better to live in the corner of an Arctic. Let's assume you have escaped. If we don't raise a generation, your children will grow up and not find spouses. Women are saying they are falling in love with women. I was sharing with somebody today about the mixtures some teenagers do today and are high on. She was shocked. Let's assume you have escaped. Will your children find a husband to marry? Truth must prevail. It must prevail in us, around us, and we must extend the frontiers of the gospel. Paul says, I don't know if you wanted the truth. Do you want the truth of it? 
For instance, there are people, no husband, no wife, that it has left the realm of natural things. Orchestrations are happening. You know, it's easier to preach this message here because you're in Africa. I came to announce to us tonight, if you accept the abnormal as normal, it will be your reality. The truth I brought tonight is the truth that says, God, what is your standard for my life? What is your will concerning me? Because when I know that one, I will identify anything that is below it. You know why we swallow any and everything? We don't know what the standard is. Why do you go to the airport and you're on your way to Atlanta, but they called a flight to London and it didn't move you because you knew where you were going to or you know your direction. So it may be British Airways to Atlanta, British Airways to London, but the call to London does not move you because your ticket says Atlanta. Some of us need to go and investigate. God, what is the standard? This is a direct word to a married person here. You want to give up on your marriage and the Lord is saying, no, don't. You are the one who will lift up the standard. The truth of the kingdom is not as watery as the things out there. I tell a lot of people, you know, people like Alison, two of them, they have sense. What if you are married to somebody, you are already married. You are not hopeless. Or what if, like people tell me, I even married him or married her, she had sense, she's misbehaving. <laughs> what did Jesus do when we fell? He became the Messiah. Marriage may ordain you into certain offices, fulfill your ordination. You are the savior of your spouse when they are lost. You are the partner of your spouse when they are found. We say the lot to single people. I need to say those things to married people. And it is not every time that they are being lost. It's just because they have backslidden, fallen, and have left the faith. What if they sleep? So we have a lot of Christian marriages where there's too much judgment by the partner who should be restoring. This also equips the single to understand that I will occupy diverse offices when I enter marriage. That's where you come to and you look at your spouse knowing that they are the ones that are wrong now. But choosing a response that says, Jiba Ndarakalia Talaba Ekandala Talakala Bara Bara Restore the one that belongs to me. I will not lose them. Give me my spouse. Satan, I refuse. Why? At that point, you know that Satan did not just come for your spouse. He came for a generation. Because there are children tied to this fall. That's where you come to and you realize that divorce doesn't just solve the problem. These are the things we say and they say, all these Christian counselors, they'll be keeping people in abuse. Hold on. People have walked away and their children's destiny melted with it. Let's be careful how we push people away who have an office. And the mistake of a lot of people is that they are waiting for their partner to fall before they do this. No, the head is at home, but I'm keeping it cemented at home. Why? Grace is for a generation. Not just for a person. You are saving a generation. Lambaraka zahia, 
I tell you the different faces that there are. Some people think when they get married, they'll just be happy. When they get married, they realize that a partner has to be reasonable. Then the partner is reasonable and God blesses them with children. Then there's something called the legacy phase. I was telling Julia, these children are going. David is 10 in September. You are commanding him around now. He will soon stand up to you and have an opinion. He will soon make choices in life. How will I spend my legacy phase? Being hurt by my children or watching the fruits of my investment? It's a generational contention. Do you know your children will make choices and silence you in this life? Do you want the truth? So people give birth to children and are rejoicing and doing naming ceremony. As you are naming, the demons assigned to attempt are monitoring. If you've watched Passion of the Christ, I love that depiction of that ugly thing who was monitoring the crucifixion process. There are two things that happen when demons are unleashed. Had they known they would have not crucified the Lord of glory is a possibility. Or they prevailed is the second possibility. Our reaction, for their release it is given. That they will be released, it is a given. I woke up once really sick. I suffered a few days. And I told my wife, I've accommodated this thing enough. There's a higher dimension. There's a higher dimension. The weakness of one generation is the curse of the next. There are dimensions. Marriage is the first institution God set up to perpetuate his influence in the earth he created. So the contention for it is real. Why? Marriage is an institution that he set up as a representation of his authority and power. So you read through scriptures, you see the parallels of scripture, the trion holy God. So, when he approaches marriage, he makes himself one complete being who is the, what you call third party in the union. The man, the woman, and God. So, in the cool of the day, he checked on the partnership. With the instructions he had left, expecting the two to cooperate with what he had told them. So that power can be available. Then the man was missing. Elohim cried that day, Adam, where are you? In essence, we don't have a quorum. This meeting can't hold. It wasn't just a search for the missing Adam. It was God searching for his quorum. I gave you this place. Can we hold board meeting? And I can't find you. I'm a lawyer. It's like going to court until the judge walks in. The court has not started sitting. Dear singles, when you stand, he or she stands, will there be a quorum? Are you married and you are the one denying your marriage quorum? Marriage is God's hack to break the devil. That's why I say where two of you, anything two of you agree. There's a higher dimension. There's a higher dimension. This thing will make you reconcile when you are quarreling. It will make you say, enough. I have my point that you are not swallowing, but I swallow my point. Can we talk? So that when we are talking about dimensions, you know, say, Please, let me say something to you. One of the ways to ensure you don't have kingdom marriage 
is to operate by your five senses. Unfortunately, the philosophy of this world teaches you to operate by your senses. Please quickly jump. We'll come back to this scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, message translation, particularly uh, verse 5 and 6. Verse 4. 1 Corinthians 7, same message translation. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Shala Barakasos of Fanasha. La 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 my phone. Get it on my phone. Mm -hmm. I choose the way of the Lord. I choose the way of the Lord. First Corinthians 7, message translation. I'll read if you find it good. About uh, verse 4 of it. He was talking about sex, but I want to bring out a, a, something in the context, yeah? Now, getting down to the question you asked in your letter first, it is a good thing to have sexual relations. Next verse. Certainly, but only within a certain context, good for a man to have a woman, a wife, uh -huh, and they blah, blah, blah. Next verse. The marriage bed must be a place of mutuality. Next verse. Marriage is not a place to stand up for your rights. It is a decision. Your rights are heavily tied to your emotion. Your decision is tied to your spirit. Your rights are tied to your emotions. Your decision is tied to your spirit. He talked to me like that. Five senses. And is it not the, I, she must apologize. Five senses. That's why you finish basking in tongue and use the same tongue to insult. Useless man. Yeah, yeah, woman. Then five minutes later, rege, rege, rege. shut up. Just shut up. Our response is governed by the spirit. <laughs> and the one that's always apologizing, apologize one more time. While we're yet sinners, he didn't say, I've had enough of this, your rubbish. Let me tell you about God's love story. Do you know how many prophets your father's killed? You know, sometimes we don't put it in perspective. God suffered though. For thousands of years, we killed prophets. We milked them and killed them. Milk and killed them. They took miracles from Jesus. When it was convenient, crucify him. Then he hung on that cross. If Jesus had moved with his senses, <laughs> in Gethsemane, he said, Ah, I can call right now for legions. I mean, they will come in. I mean... <laughs> Formations of angels. They could just land here. You know what that man did? They took off somebody's ear. He picked it up. You think his emotion picked it up? He was busting blood left, right, center. Later. He knew what was coming. This man, see, Jesus did not pray and get so many out of choice. His creation came to enable him angels that he made came to strengthen him. Do you know what? That's what the Bible says. You have not resisted sin unto death. Including the sin of the challenges in your marriage. You know when some people talk here, they just feel like Jesus did nothing. We challenge Jesus. Say, what do you do? I don't suffer past you. I didn't come to preach that you will suffer. 
This is the message that is not taught. Because it's not every time you feel romantic. Every time I'll be hailing my wife, people don't know that she's a real human being. And I'm living with a real version. People are living with a well-dressed one. Reggae do Just like I am real. If I just seen this guy is anointed. If I marry this kind of husband, you don't know. You don't know. I so mess for my wife. Fat. Smells, man. Real. There's a toilet in our house. Our food does not all become blood. <laughs> it's real. My sister, you don't have toilet. You don't brush it. You don't change your hair. Oh, you have not bathed for two years. Because the Lord is renewing you. Uh, just be going back to <laughs> First Corinthians 2. It's real. The person you will marry... Satan will attempt to weaponize them against your faith. So that the person you marry, if you choose to live in the flesh, will be the number one reason you backslide to start with. Please, can you stand up? My personalized temptation in life. My personalized trial. My personalized pressure. I have practiced forgiveness here more than anywhere in the world. Have you seen the person you love? Who loves you too? Wrong since Jesus died and still does not know they are wrong till today. Keep forming. Five senses. There's a point we come to that I need to recover the person and forget what the person is doing. Guess what? I will explain at home. I have received more apology after I forgave without apology than before I forgave. <laughs> Why? Sometimes perspective. The person can't even see it. It's the conversation that revealed to them what they were missing. And you can sit down and vice versa. My own is worse. Scale of one to ten, I do seven, she does three. I, I confess. You understand? My wife is cooler. You know, she's the cooler and the over. <laughs> you know, a lot of people just lie to us. That's what Paul was saying. Can you stand the truth? So you know what people want to see? Couple goals. You know, Julia and I, we're really having a great time. Oh my God. Oh my God. When Julia just moves, I move, man. Everything about my destiny just shifts. Yeah. Liar. Hey, kingdom marriage, kingdom marriage. It was a way. The wife was giving birth. Some women will not forgive for three years. First sight, something is wrong with you. I might say we should not be responsible, no. But if you want things to hold on to, you will never hold on to marriage. It's either the marriage or the things. Marriage is not a place to stand up for your rights. What is intercession? Let me quickly explain. Intercession is you're taking up the cause of a sinner who is not deserving the best and number one, pleading for mercy to suspend judgment. That means this person is not deserving but the first thing I am doing is to ask by mercy, dear Lord, suspend judgment. Two, after you suspend judgment, give enough time for you to intercept them like Paul on his way to Damascus so that they can see the light. So the first thing you did was to suspend judgment. The next thing you do is to ask for the light to shine. Why? God does not want you in perpetual endurance. So mercy can cover the track, but he wants light. You know, I'm speaking like this in this generation. I know people are already in difficult places. Plenty. So don't just not stand up for your right. There's something to do. 
is what I'm describing. Please go back to 1 Corinthians 2. Let me wrap this up. Why am I saying all of this today? We came to bring this message so that your faith does not rest in the philosophy of men. I have seen people advertise sessions. I have seen people teach sessions. I have seen people do all manner of things. I have seen people teach all manner of things on Instagram. Let me say this to you until there's the move of the Spirit. Some of those teachings are useless. There are a lot of teachings that have nothing to stand on because the move of the Spirit is missing. Next verse. And so nothing I said could have impressed you or anyone else. I've met a lot of people who felt, I thought your page was serious. Be going. It's not serious like that, no problem. I love a page that is not too serious and SS becomes AA. I love a page that is not too serious and the Lord will tell me, there's somebody here. It's not even you, it's your sister. Ten years waiting. This time next year, she will hold her baby and I'll get testimony. I love when I see restoration by the might of the Holy Ghost. Don't be deceived. This generation is full of philosophy. I can't impress you. Your notes may not be filled from tonight, but your spirit is loaded. Why? You can walk into a bookshop, including my books I'm advertising, you get more information than this night. There's more refueling here of the spirit, right? Because there are people seated here, you came here discouraged. With you and relationship, you were done. But as you sat here tonight, possibilities began to well up. <laughs> That's the dimension we are talking about. He said, but the message came through anyway. God's spirit and power did it. Next verse. Which may declare that your life of faith is a response to God's power, not to some fancy mental or emotional footwork by me or anyone else. If you have followed us long enough, I do not teach so that your faith is in anything other than God. That's the same message I brought in Hangout 2021. If your faith rests on anything, it's in trouble. And may I say this with every sense of responsibility. Because there's more prayer going on in Nigeria today. I love the prayer movement. But if we are not careful, men will put faith in men leading prayer than the God to whom prayer is led. Quote me. Where is your faith? Where is your faith? When the devil tries to move, who do you call? It's a shorter distance to God than a man, including me. My phone can be on silence. I can choose not to pick it. Indeed, especially on our counseling lines, I have seen call and I told the phone, I can't pick. I go to court. I touch my wife. <laughs> How about that moment? You know, I'm not people like Brother Allison, whose kisses are anointed. My kisses are extremely sexual. I'm touching my wife, you are calling for prayer. You're on your own. I'm not Jesus. <laughs> now, Joko. I'm not Christ. Your faith must rest in him. We have found more by the power of God together than by any man. Why? Satan indeed comes and it comes big time. Have you ever had three children all showing you symptoms of diverse kinds of sickness? Three. What if he asks two of you? We have been there. When you have four or five members of your house all showing diverse kinds of symptoms. Jesus did not promise us no trial. He promised us victory. But the way to the victory is what we are talking about. You will contend for many things. Some of you are here, you are contending first of all. See, people ask me this question all the time. Can I choose not to marry? I say, why? If it's out of frustration, you are wrong. 
If God told you, come and serve me, don't mind. Hey, you are not talking. So why did you ask the question? So that discouragement that says, maybe I will not even marry, is something you must contend for in faith. So God didn't tell me this one. This is what we have told people and husband showed. From where it appeared, there was no husband. Or wife just showed up. This marriage, I am tired. Who told you? This, in fact, I heard something. I really hope that video is not popular. I don't even know the man of God. Before people think it's personal attack, I will explain and put it in context. You pray, you've been trusting God for a child, and the child hasn't come. Adopt. I was okay at that point. Good move. He said, God says the Lord, I'm telling you now. He was mixing it. He wasn't saying God told him. He was issuing what he said as thus says the Lord. I said, no. No, sir. No, sir. Adoption is perfect. But why are you doing this? Why are you shouting God thus said it? He was clear that he was not saying God told him. He was saying that what he just said should be taken as thus said the Lord. I said, no, sir. I said, no, sir. Let's be careful where we are giving up and thinking it's God. Let's be careful. All the people that Jesus healed, it was God's will for him to heal them. So it would have been out of order to say just endure. There's something called long suffering. There's something called, uh, you got what I'm saying. Uh, because sometimes uh, you got to go through the pit. Uh, let me say something to you. The pit does not mean you must be pitiable. Uh, sometimes you're going through the pit and you're feeling cool. Shut up! Some pit are just a proof of our disobedience. Some pit is because we don't ask God, should I be here? Don't accept anything you have not inquired of the Lord. So David said, <laughs> So they just took our wives and children. Should we pursue? The moment he heard go, no other reality made sense. Be careful what has tormented you enough to make sense to you. Be careful what you are embracing as reality. Anything you accept by reason of frustration is a confirmation of satanic moves. We, of course, have plenty of wisdom to pass on to you once you get your feet on the firm spiritual ground. So wisdom is not necessary until the feet is on the right ground. So before I begin to talk romance, are you born again? Like Brother Alice was asking. Before I begin to talk 50 ways to show it to your wife, some of you follow our stories where we put some out of the things we do to make sure they are happy. But happy with who? Don't go for the what until you understand the who. But it is not popular wisdom. The fashionable wisdom of high price experts. <laughs> My generation. I didn't attack you. High priced. You can't talk to me for one hour until you see. I get paid as a lawyer. I have no problem with anybody putting a price on sessions or counseling. But I will not pay for something that is not rooted in Christ. That's what Paul is saying here. He said the fashionable wisdom of high price experts that will be out of date in a year or so. When you are done paying for a session, if it doesn't take you deeper in God or in God's will, don't waste your money. Especially in my generation where everybody is floating a course. Somebody comes out of breakup, is doing how to endure breakups. Somebody goes through 15, divorce. How to manage the divorce life. How to leave a cheating man, 20,000. People who saw it, it was everywhere. What's the first wisdom of God there? This is wrong. What's the second wisdom of God? Can you be an intercessor here? 
What's the third wisdom of God? Can you be addressing it? Say, honey, I know what you're doing. It hurts me. I don't accept it. But let me say something to you. My stay here is not condoning it. I'm praying for you because you need to see the light. Any other mode of survival is a sin. You are punishing you, your destiny, and your children. It will be out of date. That's why I have a decision before the Lord. When people come to us for counseling, I don't want to give them temporary wisdom. Wisdom that will just last a year or so. It may be hard to follow, but this is the permanent solution. It may be hard to follow, but this is the counsel of God. It may be hard to follow, but this is what God is saying. Because as a counselor, people come to me seeking permission to do what they have already conceived. They don't want to hear the truth. They are coming to seek permission to do what's in their heart. And for those of us who do this at ministry, we suffer. Some people, when they are talking to us, you think I'm applying to counsel them. For God's sake, I am busy. It's not me that is seeking you. You are seeking me with arrogance and pride. For our classes online, for instance, the primarital class, school of marriage, we have had people who tell me, Papa, I told you I can't read. You can't take the class. I, I told you I don't like, I mean, I heard that thing over and over. I told you, some people will even come back when they see the advert for another month. I would have loved to join this thing, but I told you. I'll reply. You know how I reply? I send the same conditions as it responds to you. Excuse me. My father was paying heavy school fees for me to become a lawyer, which I'm still doing anyway. Some lawyers have plenty of money. Oh. Me, man, I'm on that path. Then God said, from foundation of earth, I put this thing on you. I am doing the thing, JJ. Not that I didn't know what to do. Oh. Then somebody's threatening me. So now I just tell my wife, don't pray for me now. Go ahead, answer this person. You think I'm jobless? If I answer this person, <laughs> seed, you know, so support, you know, support, advertise, you know, advertise, you don't do anything, you don't insult me on top of cash selling. Holy Spirit, you just constrain me. I'm telling you, sometimes, see her, I tell her, just pray for me now. Because this one, if I answer like me, me, Ocholi Okutapa, sorry, Ocholi Ojoni Mi Okutapa, if I answer now. Let's wrap it up. Next verse. Final verse. Hey! Final verse. Is that person under the anointing? Reggae, bo, 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 Lord, wake him up. Yes! God's wisdom is something mysterious that goes deep into the interior of purposes. You don't find it lying around on the surface. It's not the latest message, but more like the oldest. What God determined as the way to bring out his best in us long before we ever arrived on the scene. I close here. If anybody teach you relationship and marriage outside the word of God, reject them their gospel go with them he said long before we showed up he laid the foundation of all of this if the answers you seek come from anywhere but the word of god run from it in the next few minutes samuel ministers please music ministers get on stage we're going to use the next 10 minutes and dance a dance of victory